Well, this is it then. Almost at the end of the utter dumpster fire that was 2020, and time for my last video of the year. I want to look ahead to what Star Citizen has in store for us in 2021. And whilst many will be thinking in terms of ships, I wanted to talk about three other things we'll hopefully see. Now, of course, I know we all love to see new ships and ships uh, that are concepts become flyable, but really they're not a great indicator of actual progress. I mean, sure, we can have a hundred different exploration ships in the game, but if there's no actual exploration gameplay, then, well, having these ships doesn't have much point. So I'm really hoping that in 2021, we'll see the first iteration of at least two new gameplay loops. Why two? Well, look at it this way. In terms of gameplay loops present at the moment, we have ship and first person combat, ship bounties, uh, even if the bounties just, hey, go here and blow this guy up, mining, refining, trading, uh, kind of deliveries, I guess, uh, and prisons. What we've had promised are things like salvage, exploration, repairs, medical gameplay, refueling, rearming, fleet command, <gasps> stealth, electronic warfare, data running, damage control, capital ship derelicts, engineering, buildable stations and land bases. And that, that's just off the top of my head. So while ships are exciting and important, um, I mean, for some of us, they're the reason we backed in the first place, they're also what a lot of us are buying, so as with any product, we've got a vested interest in seeing them come to uh, fruition. They're not really edging us closer to a more complete version of the game at this point. Once we have a few more gameplay loops implemented, we'll begin to see all the possibilities as to how these gameplay loops can interact with each other. They'll be more use for a lot of the ships that we have, but are basically glorified touring ships or just really really inefficient cargo haulers and maybe just maybe it'll shut up a lot of people outside the community about star citizen just being a glorified tech demo but i wouldn't hold my breath now in all likelihood a fair few of these gameplay loops are going to rely on tech that will follow the implementation of iCache. so can you guess what the next thing i really want to see next year is I know, I know, iCache is planned for the end of quarter two, 2021, but bear with me. If you're not aware of what iCache is, it's currently being worked on as a replacement for what we have in the game at the moment called PCache or Persistence Cache. This is the cache that stores data about every persistent item in the game. And whilst it was needed in order to start with live builds of the persistent universe, it really, really falls short of what is needed right now let alone what we need in order for the game to progress in its development. By way of example, us not having properly physicalized inventories in the game, that's an issue with the P-cache. Not being able to always get back into your fully loaded trade ship after disconnecting, P-cache. If the P-cache goes down, the game becomes unplayable. The I-cache, on the other hand, is going to use a whole group of different services to fulfill this function all of which will scale much better than Pcash does for a quicker and more stable gameplay experience. The data that the iCache holds will also be replicated across CIG's network in nodes, meaning that the iCache on your server going down won't kill it as the node will be automatically regenerated from the data held elsewhere. So why has iCache made my list as if it might not happen this year? Well, because it might not happen this year. It's such a vital underpinning bit of tech that it's even a requirement before server meshing can happen. And something this key with this many moving parts, adding to the fact that various people are in lockdown and can't meet up and can't go to work and all that sort of stuff, well, that can make it pretty prone to setbacks. I want to be positive about it, so here's hoping. And my third hope for 2021? Well, I had to change what I recorded initially because before I'd even released the video, the lesser from Chris Roberts, uh, which I've linked in the description, made it pretty clear, at least to me, it's not going to happen next year. I was really hoping to see Squadron 42 go to beta, closed, open, Evocati, any sort of beta, this year. 
but with CIG remaining t pretty tight-lipped uh, and the postponing of their planned Squadron 42 Developments video series, the briefing room, well, it all kind of comes together to make that look pretty damn unlikely. And just while we're talking about it, um, I think the biggest clue is in this part of his letter where old Chris Roberts says, For most games, it is typical to not even announce the project until about 12 months out, and only start building awareness with marketing six months before launch. The issues with showing gameplay, locations or assets on a narratively driven game this early are twofold. Firstly, a marketing campaign can only last so long, and second, there is only so much of the gameplay that we can show before release as we want you to experience a really engrossing story. Basically, he means spoilers. If we show the non-spoiler gameplay now, that's prime footage in gameplay that could have been used closer to release. He then goes on to say, Because of this, I have decided that it is best to not show Squadron 42 gameplay publicly, nor discuss any release date until we are closer to the home stretch and have high confidence in the remaining time needed to finish the game to the quality that we want. For me, that reads as uh, any significant access we as a community are going to get to Squadron 42 development footage or kind of in-depth behind-the-scenes stuff will be just before or as part of a marketing campaign in the lead-up to the game's release. Uh, they may even have the release date at that point. All of which is to say that I had to change my mind from what I pre-recorded uh, and come up with something else for my third hope. Before we get into that though, let me ask you, what ship, feature or other Star Citizen related thing are you really looking forward to seeing or maybe just hoping to see in 2021? Let me know down in the comments. My third hope? Uh, it's a little harder to define, but also it's one of the more exciting concepts for the community if CIG do run with it and execute it well. And that's increasing community uh, involvement in the game's development. Way back when, in 2014, the community were involved in basically, well, they were basically responsible for designing one of Star Citizen's ships in a competition called the Next Great Starship. Teams of people made up from the community who were able to concept and then model their ideas for a ship competed to have that ship chosen to be included in the game. And basically, that's how Redeemers are born. <laughs> Seriously though, I mean, this has kind of continued in one form or another along Star Citizen's development. Um, kind of recently, uh, with giving players at CitizenCon 2019 a say in which ship got worked on first from three different options. Of course, we'll always have community involvement through like the forums and the issue council, um, from the unique position of being backers uh, and at concierge for those that are. But Star Citizen's unique development doesn't have to stop at just a complete lack of publisher pressure for release dates and its crowdfunding model. I do have a few more specific ideas that I'd really like to explore in depth in a future video, so I won't go into them here, but keep your eyes peeled for that. And if you want to know when they go live, then just make sure you're subscribed and you've got the bell clicked uh, so you can see when those videos go up. But wherever you are and whatever's going on right now, I hope you're able to at least a little bit enjoy New Year's Eve. And if you're watching after New Year's Eve, well then just forget I said anything, I guess. Uh, you've been watching Drinkers With Gaming Problems. Thanks very much for stopping by, and I'll see you soon.